Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water tutorial. As the winter nights are drawing in, a lot of us will be turning to small still waters for our fly fishing fix. And uh, this IPN will give you plenty of sport. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H970 barbless hook. This one's at size 8, it's on a heavy wire hook and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas, it's the F01 and it's at 60. Now you might have noticed that on the hook itself I've stuck a 4mm countersunk gold tungsten bead and what I'm going to do is I've just got some wax onto my thread I'm going to catch my thread in behind that eye and I want to build up just a stopper to stop the uh, bead moving backwards on the shank it doesn't bother some tires actually I've watched several people uh, and some people don't it doesn't worry them that the the bead moves about on the shank but I don't like it so I'm just going to build that stopper in if you like then I can bring my thread all the way back to the pronounced bump on this uh, 970 barbless, so it's just there. Then I can remove my waist piece. Now, as you've seen, this has got a long marabou tail, so again, just at the end here, I'm going to build up a bit of a bulbous rugby ball shape. And that just prevents the, the marabou tail wrapping round the bend of the hook, which can be an noise. Oops, let's come back. Thread slipped there. And that should do the job. So for the tail of this fly, uh, I'm going to be using some uh, Comp Candy Marabou. And this one is the Marabou Olivesque. Now, I've already got a feather off that I've been working with. Now, what I want is, is quite a big bushy tail on this fly. I want it to pulsate in the water and really move. So I'm going to add quite a lot of marabou. Again, I'm going to use my thumbnail and thumb knuckle as a guide and take off a load of fibre, give it a little twist and then take away the waist ends there. Next I can catch that in full length of the body and just get it wrapped on. It doesn't need to be particularly tidy at this point. So I've got that first layer of marabou in. Now I'm going to take a second layer again nail to the thumb knuckle to give it that volume that I'm looking for. Now some people would say, why don't you just take a big whole chunk and tie it in? But you don't get the same kind of neatness. If you do it like this, it's just a lot neater. So catch that in. Come up to your big bulk and you can see I've started to volumise the tail now. Going to get loads of movement in that which is exactly what I'm after. So I've tied that down. If you think the tail's too long and you're going to get tail nips from the fish, you can simply come in and pinch away what you don't want with your fingers, like so. But don't cut it. If you cut it, you lose the effect that the marabou's going to give you. Uh, now I want to add a little bit of tinsel into the uh, tail. So what I've got here is some uh, glister. I'm just going to take one fibre, don't need a lot of it, and I'm going to double it up. I'll catch it in on my side first, and then I'll bring the remainder around to your side and catch that in. Make sure it's all coming back in the direction you want it, and I want it to be running sort of square along 
the middle of the tail. So I'm fairly happy with that. And what you want to do with this is it might just be slightly off camera, but I'm cutting it slightly longer than the tail. Okay, next, wet your thumb and forefinger and just slick it all back. And there you've got your little uh, bit of glister in there as well. Okay, so for the body of the fly, I'm going to be using some of this. It's called McEggit. Um, it's from Celtic Blob Company and it is a limited edition. I don't know why they do these limited editions because this is great stuff and um, once I've used up this packet and it's not available anymore, I'm going to be pretty sad. But uh, I've already taken a little bit out of the fibre. And what this stuff is, now I've got it out, if I, if I fluff it out a bit, you might be able to see. It's a combination of fritz and fibre. And it's tied into a sort of blob-like um, structure with, with a core. And it's, it's a really interesting material. And it looks fantastic when it's wet. So I've just shaved away some of the uh, fibre so I can expose the core and I'm going to catch in that tag all the way up to the front of the fly and then I can bring it up. Now after every turn I'm just going to slick it back with my thumb and forefinger and that creates the bulk I want in the body. They do um, a number of different limited editions. Uh, I'm a big fan of these limited editions. It kind of it worries you that you get a fly that absolutely is fantastic and then you can never replicate it because you can't buy the materials. It's like when your, your favourite fly tying shop goes out of business and uh, they were the one place you went to for a certain colour of marabou and, and now you can't get it anymore. I've just maybe tied this a wee bit shorter than I should. But I'm getting value for money out of this piece. So as I get to the bend, I can secure that a little bit in. Sweep it all back, a couple of turns in front. And snip away the waste. Now, the, uh, I've just wet my thumb and forefinger there. I just want to slick it all back and get it out of the way. Now, what I'm going to do next is uh, bring in my whip finish tool and just cast off the black thread. And I can remove that. Now, as a fishing fly, you could just very well take this off the vise and away you go. But I like to add uh, a little bit of extra to my flies. They call these um, idiot proof nymphs, and uh, so it's certainly in the right hands with me. But uh, there is a bit more to, to fishing than just uh, throwing in some big, gaudy looking nymph. You've got to work the fly properly, and, and this works well with. Uh, a varied retrieve. So, sorry, I've blethered there and forgot to tell you that I'm using Glowbright number five and I'm just getting a collar onto it now. Once you're content, you've got a few wraps in there, the Glowbright will just pull away no problems. Then you can continue to build your collar. Yeah, I think a lot of Certainly, as I was, I was learning the trade, if you like, fly fishing, a lot of the older guys that were into nymphing and dry fly fishing would, would look down at you because you were fishing lures. And uh, I always thought, well, I'm not worried because I'm catching plenty of fish. So don't let the snobs get you down. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, uh, their winter sport really revolve around small still waters and these can uh, save the blank quite a bit. So I've just added a bit of UV resin to my glow bright and I'm going to come in with my quick finisher to finish it off. Now, I 
just want to open my vise because I think I've got some fibres on the other side here. Yeah, I thought I did. When I pulled that away, it didn't quite pull away as, as much as I thought it had. So I just tidied that up there with my scissors. And what I want to do to finish it off is just give that orange collar a little UV resin. It does change the, uh, the look of the fly and it also protects your wraps there. So I've caught that in, just going to cure it off. Don't be afraid to substitute the materials. I have done another video on the uh, the IPN as it's named and uh, I'll stick a link up to that in the info bar in a sec. But that'll do you a job on a, one of these small still waters if you happen to be out fishing over the winter. It's certainly one to have a think about. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the videos. If you are, please consider sub subscribing to the channel and I'll see you all next time.